Namaste everyone, Charlie here, founder of Indiv Yoga. Today we're going to do a short class focusing on strengthening our core. So not just those typical six pack muscles that people say, the core muscles all the way through into the back. So we're going to be doing some work on our wrists. So let's just start by giving them a few circles, stretching them open, getting them ready for what's to come. And as always, in the other direction too. Up and down. And from side to side. So take this practice nice and gently, don't push yourself. But any time of feeling that you're getting out of breath, the heart's beating too fast, just come down onto the mat into child's pose and just allow the heartbeat and the breath to come back down to a natural rhythm. So we're going to start in a lying down position for our core practice and just do a couple of exercises to begin with to warm them up. So lying down, I'd like you to note that as you lie flat down on the mat, the lower back has risen off the floor and this is just due to the natural lumbar curve in the spine. So what I'd like you to do here is to press the lower back down into the mat and just really flatten it. Keep pressing down and just breathing deeply into this pose. You should be able to feel muscles in the abdomen warming up, feeling them activated. It's just a very simple exercise that you can do. Even if you have quite a hard mattress first thing in the morning, just warming up the core. I'll do a couple more breaths. Keep pressing really firmly, really flattening the lumbar spine down onto the mat. and then gently release. Bend the knees into the chest. See if you can do this without using the arms, just your core strength to rock yourself up into a seated position. Now we're gonna come into our opposite leg and arm extension from an all fours position. So ground the hands down onto the mat, underneath the shoulders and the knees directly underneath the hips. Make sure that you have equal weight distribution between the hands and the legs. Very often because of the disproportionate weight of the head, we tend to lean forwards a bit and put too much pressure on the front of the wrists. So nice and equal here. We're going to extend the right leg behind us and the left arm in front. Push down into that right hand so you're lifting nice and tall. Really extend the toes to the back wall and the left fingers forwards and breathe deeply here. It's just going to help warm up those core muscles. I'm going to work on both sides. One more deep breath, really breathing into the belly and exhaling and then release. And you'll realize or notice because you're engaging the core muscles in that pose that you're not getting a full belly breath that it's more into the intercostal area of our breathing other side extending the left leg and the right arm once again pulling the toes back the fingers forward pressing down into that left hand so you're growing nice and tall and breathing deeply the deep breaths are what are going to really stimulate those core muscles. Make sure the neck stays completely relaxed. No creases in the back of the neck. And you can check this just by swaying the chin gently from side to side. One more big breath here. And then gently release. And if after any of these poses, where we're putting weight down on the wrists, you feel a little bit sore or tired, just give them a little bit of a shake. We're gonna come into the same position again. We're gonna add a curl to the movement, to the pose. We're going to take a nice big inhale here, stretching the toes, 
and the fingertips. And on the exhale, we're going to curl the left elbow and the right knee in towards one another. Inhale to extend, exhale to curve in. Now remember not to have all the weight on that right hand. Distribute it equally between there and the left leg. Two more. Inhale to extend, exhale to curl, and inhale, stretch, exhale, curl, and then release. Shake out that right wrist as you extend the fingers forwards and the left toes back. Nice big inhale, extending from wall to wall, and exhale, curling in. Inhale to extend, and exhale to curl. Keep that weight equal between the hand and the leg. Exhale. Let's do two more. Inhale to stretch. Exhale to curl. Last big breath. Exhale. And then gently release. And feel free to give the left one a little bit of a shake if it's feeling a little bit tired. Okay, we're going to come into our plank position, a nice high plank. However, you can also use the variation of dolphin arms. So you can place the elbows directly under the wrists, uh, the shoulders, and lift yourself up, lifting the hips and the buttocks. Or if you're up for it today, hands grounding underneath the shoulders and lifting up into your plank pose. We want to do a nice high lunge here to really engage those core muscles. So you're pressing down into the hands and keep the neck completely relaxed here, engaging the buttocks and the core muscles to lift the hips as high as they'll go. Keep breathing, keeping the head relaxed so there's no tension there in the neck. Make sure that you don't slump down in this pose if you're feeling a little bit weak and just come down into the dolphin variation. One more breath and then gently come down onto your knees and sitting back on your heels as I demonstrate the next pose. So we're going to do a side plank here and again you have the option of either grounding the hand directly under the shoulder and stacking the other foot on top all coming down into dolphin arm with the hand pointing to the side and lifting up here. Now if you're finding it a bit hard to balance in either of them, you can place the top foot in front if you like and keep lifting up through that left hip, extending the arm up. Whichever version you're in, making sure that the shoulder is either over the wrist or over the elbow and you keep lifting up through that left hip. Really feel it pulling up to the sky. Really working our oblique muscles here and then gently releasing back down and coming into it on the other side. Again, either elbow underneath or the hand pulling up through that right hip now. And again, just making sure that the head stays completely relaxed and you can cross the foot in front if you're feeling a little bit wobbly or you're not quite up for it today. Breathing deeply, deeply taking your eyes to wherever comfortable for the neck. Maybe looking up if you like. Keep lifting up even higher and then gently releasing back down. Wonderful, okay. Now we're going to come into a downward dog. So making sure that the middle finger is in line with the elbow and the shoulders. Fingers are spread. Coming up into your pose, rotate those elbows outwards so you get a good stretch through the shoulders. Just take a couple of moments establishing 
your alignment for you to about 10 centimeters apart. Don't bend each knee if you're feeling a bit tight through the backs of the legs. And then establishing your pose, keep the arms strong and straight, don't let them bend as you come into three-legged dog, raising the right leg up into the air, as high as you can. We're going to take a nice big inhale here and then we're going to do a plank curl. So as we exhale, we're going to bring the shoulders forward over the wrists and draw that knee in between the hands. Inhale to take it back into three-legged dog and exhale to curl it in. And again, inhale, keep the arms strong and straight and exhale to curl. Once more, inhale, extending and exhale, curling in and then finding yourself back in your downward dog position. Keep the alignment of the pose as you come into three-legged dog on the left side, lifting the leg up, feel that stretch down the right leg. Nice big inhale here and as you exhale, bending the knee forwards. Inhaling to extend back and exhaling to curl. Lovely, let's do two more. Inhaling and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Lovely. And then down the dog once again before coming forwards into plank and lowering yourself down to the mat. If you need a bit of a rest here, feel free to put each hand one on top of the other and just rest the head on the hands here. Give yourself a few breaths. It's allowing the breath to come back to its natural rhythm. And we're going to come into our locust pose. So for this, we're going to take the arms behind, palms facing down, shoulders pulling into each other. Feet are a bit apart and we're going to engage the buttocks and just lift up. Lifting up the thighs and the chest, keeping the neck completely relaxed once again. And just breathing, keep engaging those buttocks. Protect the lower back and your back bend. One more breath, lifting up even higher. And then gently releasing back down once again you can put your head on your hands or you can take yourself back slowly into child's pose and just counter stretching from the back bend into the forward bend just releasing any tension there through the lumbar spine Let's get ready for our crow pose, our arm balance. Very, very good core strength, but it requires some core strength to do it. So if you're not comfortable or strong enough to come into the full pose, don't worry. I'm going to show you some variations so that you can still start getting the benefits of the crow pose without doing the whole thing and actually lifting off the floor. So to start, you're going to take the hands in line with the shoulders in front of you. And you're going to press the inner knee into the upper arm, above the elbow, so you're not compromising the elbow joint. And we just want to press and keep pressing, just really get that connection so they don't slip off. Just keep pressing in. And then we're just going to start taking the weight forwards, coming onto the tips of our toes, and then rolling it back. And this might be where you're at today. Just taking it forwards and back and just playing with that weight distribution. Keep pressing those inner knees into the upper arms. And if comfortable, you might wanna raise one foot off the floor. Just practice being here. The other one. You wanna find a focal point for the eyes, couple of feet in front of you, not down at the mat. This is a lifting pose. You're lifting up through the back. And if comfortable doing so, Taking the weight forwards and re 
placing both feet off the mat. Keep breathing in your arm balance. People have a tendency to hold their breath and they're holding the balance. Make sure you keep breathing. To take it further, got a bit more of a challenge. You can take the knees to the backs of the arms or all the way up into your armpits. And pressing them in there, taking the weight forwards and keep breathing, lifting up through the back, really engaging those core muscles. And when you're ready, gently releasing and giving yourself a bit of a shake of the wrists. We're not going to be using them now, so we can allow them to relax completely. So now we're going to come into a seated position and we're going to do a well-known pose, but we're going to do this one dynamically, the boat pose. So very important for this pose is balancing on the sitting bones. So we don't want to just rest on the coccyx, the sort of remnants of our tailbone, which are fused bones, four or five of them, that create a bit of a cup at the very bottom of your spine. And if you rest there, then you can just stay here forever. Core muscles aren't engaged, you're just resting on your coccyx. You want to lift up a little bit, straighten the spine a little bit forward, and you'll find that tipping point where you're actually balancing upon your two sitting bones. So we want to find that point, raise the legs up, bending the knees, arms can go forward. If this gets a little bit too much, you can support yourself by taking the hands behind the knees and just holding yourself in this pose. But we're going to do this dynamically. So as we inhale, we're going to take ourselves back to nice and straight. As we exhale, we're going to curl ourselves in. Keep staying on those sitting bones when you bring yourself up, really working those core muscles. Inhale, we go back onto the coccyx and we straighten and we exhale and we come in. Inhaling to extend, you can keep your neck nice and comfortable. Exhale to curl in. Let's do a couple more. Inhaling to extend. Exhaling to curl in as much as you can. Inhale, extend. And exhale, curling in. Lovely. And then allowing the feet to just relax on the floor. All right, we're going to come down onto the mat for a bridge pose. We're going to do this nice and carefully using our core muscles and protecting the lower back. So with the heels into the body, knees bent, we're gonna inhale and raise our arms up. And when we exhale, roll down vertebra by vertebra, nice and slow, use the exhale there. Just relax the arms by your side, bending the knees and bringing those heels as close in to the buttocks as you can. We're going to let the arms relax by our sides. We're going to engage the buttocks and we're going to lift ourselves up as high as we can, just shuffling those shoulders together underneath you, making sure there's a little bit of space underneath the neck so you're not tucking the chin downwards. You're leaving a bit of space there to protect the cervical spine. Feet are nice and flat, equal weight distribution. Sometimes people put the weight on the outside of the feet, inside, forwards or back. So make sure they're nice and equally grounding down and you're lifting up as much as you can as you engage your buttocks. Now the knees also have a tendency to fall outwards or come too far in. Make sure that you're engaging the buttocks and the thighs and keeping the knees in line with the hips. Lifting up, a few more breaths. Here we're really working the core muscles further back. Last breath, even higher. Bring the heels in towards you, take hold of them if you like. Interlace the hands underneath you. And then gently release vertebra by vertebra and bend the knees slowly into the chest. You can take hold of them. Just give yourself a bit of a rest here, just neutralizing the spine after this back bend. Some people like to roll from side to side. a couple of breaths just really releasing into the lower back and our last few core poses here 
So we're going to start with our spinal twist. And twists are always very good for neutralizing the spine as well. So we could do this one interlacing the fingers, placing the hands under the head and allowing the elbows to stretch outwards. And this is quite nice and supportive for the spine as opposed to just having the arms straight out. So we're going to take a nice big inhale here, press the knees together, bring them as high up as you can, and as we exhale, we're going to let them drop towards the left and keeping the shoulders on the mat. Make sure the, the knees don't touch the floor. Doing this dynamically, we're going to inhale and come up to centre. Keep those knees as high up and pressing together as you can and exhale over to the other side. Keep that left shoulder on the mat. Knees don't quite reach the floor. Inhaling to come up, exhaling over to the left. Right shoulder stays on the floor, knees about a centimetre off. Inhaling to come up, knees tight, as high up as you can, and as high up as you go over. So it's almost like they're trying to reach that elbow. Inhaling to come up, exhale, knees come towards the left, eyes can go to the right if you like, so it's more of a twist all the way up through the spine. Inhale, eyes and knees to centre, and exhale to the other side. One more time. Inhale, nice and controlled with the breath. Exhaling over. Inhale, and exhale to the other side. Lovely. And then inhale. And then just release the legs straight out on the mat. Last two. So this first exercise, the shoulder raise, is going to work the upper abdominals a bit more and the back, the deeper ones. So once again, hands stay interlaced underneath the head. Legs are just nice and relaxed. Feet together or a little bit apart. And all we're going to do here is press the lower back into the mat as we did earlier and raise the head as high as it will go. Now from here, we want to keep that distance of the shoulders off the mat, but then just relax the head into our little nest that we've made with our hands. So none of that lift is coming from the arms or the neck. It's all coming from the core muscles. The neck is nice and relaxed. You can gently sway it from side to side to keep lifting those shoulders up. You should be able to feel Core muscles really engaging here, bringing it more into the upper abdomen. Keep lifting a little bit higher and then gently release the head back down and you can let the arms come by your side. Okay, our last core exercise, our leg raises. So this now is going to work the more superficial uh, muscles in the core and the six pack muscles lower down in the abdomen. So we want the arms straight by our side, but nice and close in so that we're sitting on our thumbs, drawing those elbows together underneath us and the shoulders, nice and close. We're gonna press the legs together and nice and slowly on an inhale, begin raising the legs up 90 degrees. Now this first one is very important because here you want to shuffle yourself to make sure that when your legs are up, the lower back is really pressing down into the mat. And as you exhale, slowly lowering down without touching the floor if you can. Inhaling to raise up 90 degrees and exhale to very slowly lower. If this is a bit too much for the lower back, you can inhale bending the knees into the chest first, and then straightening them. Exhale, bending them in, and straightening down. Inhale, bending, and straightening. Exhale, bending, and there are even touching the floor. That's a bit too much. So wherever you're at today, nice and slowly inhaling, exhaling, moving slowly with the breath, Nice and controlled as you lower. Let's do two more, breathing 
in and breathing out and last one breathing in and lowering nice and slow all the way to the mat release the hands bend the knees once again into the chest just releasing any tension there in the lumbar spine and we'll rock as comfortable massaging the lower back a little bit and then either lying yourself down for shavasana and feel free to click on one of my shavasana meditation videos or coming back up and carrying on with your practice. I hope your core muscles are feeling a little bit warmer, a bit more engaged and I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day. Namaste.